outside a January storm whips through the Norton Sound village of Shaktulik. Inside, Sophia Kachetag unwinds after a long day at work. The smell of moose soup and the sounds of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fill the small two-bedroom home, which she shares with her husband and their four kids. This is our hallway. This is our room where we share with the two younger ones. Living in such a tight space has been especially difficult during the pandemic, when they've had to stay home during outbreaks. Their teenage daughter wants her own room too, but expanding isn't financially feasible even with two incomes. Statewide, Alaskans are twice as likely to live in an overcrowded household than the national average. Rates are highest in small rural communities like Shaktulik, where around 60% of residents live in overcrowded conditions. The Department of Housing and Urban Development defines overcrowding as more than one person to a room in the house, including the living room and kitchen. We are short of housing. We have multiple families living in houses. I think that adds to the uh, social problems that occur when you have adults arguing or, you know, having a different opinion or fighting over the TV remote control and all that stuff. A 6 says part of the problem is Shaq Tulik's geography. The few vacant homes need work because of the harsh climate and substandard construction. And because the town is only accessible by barge or bush plane, high construction costs keep people from building more or renovating. Everything has to be ordered, you know. One sheet of plywood costs you over $100, you know, 130 sometimes. That was the most expensive part. Was the Financing is difficult yeah. since most of the land is owned by the village corporation instead of homeowners, and bank loans are often inaccessible. Climate change is also eroding buildable land and slowing down economic activities like crab fishing, which used to provide more jobs in the village. And, he says, there's a lack of awareness and resources to address the problem. I don't think there's much consideration to what goes on in the bush. Shaktulik is 97 percent Alaskan Native, and the region's federally funded tribal housing authority is responsible for the bulk of the town's residential construction. They haven't built here in more than a decade. But thanks in part to federal COVID relief funding, Shaktulik is getting four new modular houses, which are pre-built and then transported to their final destination. That's welcome news for city clerk Isabel Jackson. Good afternoon, Shaktulik. After almost 10 years of waiting, she's getting a home of her own. She'll pay a prorated rent for 25 years and then own it outright. Yeah, I remember the moment um, when they called me and um, after they said I'm uh, one of the recipients for a uh, three-bedroom home, I started crying. <laughs> I got quiet. <laughs> I, uh, tears rolled down my eyes and <laughs> just for, you know, happiness. Like many other residents, she thought about leaving because finding housing is so difficult here. But the subsistence lifestyle and the tight-knit community have kept her. Home is home for me. <laughs> Right now, she and her two kids share a hallway, and her father, who's sick, sleeps on the couch. That's been particularly difficult during the pandemic when they've worried about spreading the coronavirus. We're helping each other out, you know, taking care of him right now. And but yeah, it's um, difficult. Yeah. Jackson's future home and three others are sitting in Nome's shipyard until the barge can access Shaktulik in the spring. The Bering Straits Regional Housing Authority is also bringing three new homes to Diomede, including a tiny home, and four to Wales. The extra funding from the American Rescue Plan and the CARES Act is helping the organization build more homes more quickly, says CEO and President Jolene Lyon. Hi, good morning! Still, it's only a small dent in the problem. We don't have the funding. That makes it very difficult and frustrating sometimes when you know that the need is greater than that, and you, you could deliver on doing more, but it, it's just, that's not the reality of it. Lyon says the region needs an estimated 400 new homes to meet the need and alleviate overcrowding. She says they'll tackle the problem one home at a time. Reporting in Nome and Jack Tulik, I'm Erin McKinstry with Jeff Chen.